this is a lot of prep for here. And I don't edit my stuff. So, you know, you get the bloopers and everything. But the thing is, is that I've been doing a lot of research about seniors and stuff. Maybe it's because I am uh, maturing years and I have a lot to think about. When you're young, you just don't think. But this one here is by uh, Backdoor Survival, The Plight of the Senior Prepper, July the 22nd, 2014. Now, he says there are all, all sorts of preppers. And that's true, because the other day I was talking to a friend of mine. He said, well, you're not a prepper. You're just about living life. I said, well, I'm called more like a basic prepper, a down-to-earth prepper. It's not that I don't feel things, but within my budget, I do what I can for a prepper situation with food and things like that. So there is all sorts. Some are ranked beginners, and others have been practicing family preparation for 20 years or more. Some live in urban areas, and some live in the country, and most assuredly, some are young adults in their 20s, and there are and are in their 60s, 70s, and 80s. Just because you're in the 80s don't mean you need to stop prepping. The thing is, you're not just, when you get that old, you have to take care of yourself. Bottom line, you, you know, our meds get real expensive. If you cannot learn to find alternative courses to the medicine, as well to survive of yourself with food and stuff, with the cost of living going up every day, it's smarter to be in that prepping situation because you do not know what's going to happen. Now, it says, give the widely ranged demographics a stance of reason that some preparation topics will be more interesting and more useful to one group than to another. And that's based on the location. I had one. He says, I don't even own a pair of socks. I live in a tropical islands and everything. But they don't have even one coat, anything for winter. What if something happened and that tropical island became not so tropical? And they have nothing to keep themselves warm with. They're going to freeze to death, bottom line. That's just how the same way in a tropical area, I mean a cold area, where you're used to snow and everything all the time. What happens if all that just thawed out all at once? Do you have anything to kind of prepare yourself? Do you have like a, maybe a raft or something? I'm not saying, because I don't have this stuff. I, I can't afford it. So I have to figure out my knowledge and preparation of what I can do with what's within my budget. This is just a, something to think about in the area. Okay. The basis tenets of emergency food, communication, first aid, self-defense, and self-sufficiency are universal. Now, it don't matter where. you got to do that. Furthermore, there are no boundaries and no set requirements that a person be interested in each topic equally. And that's the truth. Uh, some of my purple friends are very heavy into the guns. I was talking to a friend of mine other day. I said, I have no problems with guns. I don't own one. It's just because I can't afford to buy one right now. It's not that I don't believe in the guns. I believe we do need guns for uh, self-defense reasons, for hunting our food, and in basic areas. I don't believe in just going out and just killing people, killing people, or using it to rob stores or anything like that. I don't believe in that. What? But I do believe in that. I don't believe in having 400 guns. I believe in having four guns. There's a difference from four to 400. I believe in having four basic guns that I know I can use from a, a you know, a 380 automatic, you know, nine millimeters fine, if that's what you want to get, to a good uh, rifle, to a good, uh um, possibility of a good shotgun whatever it is but the thing is I would want to concentrate on those four weapons to have my four bullets for these four weapons instead of having 400 guns to try to have 400 different bullets when I can only shoot so much of time with a 38 automatic I can carry it with me I can have several backup loads scrapped to my chest in a situation I need the same as a rifle. With the new type of rifles and gun, uh, shotguns now that folds up, that's much lighter weight, if I had the money, that would be the route I would choose to go in those type of automatic weapons and have my uh, backup supply. with. And also I would have um, a reloader, learn how to make my own reload and reload my own bullets and everything to be able to continue to use it for those four basic guns. So there. Now, and now we're talking about family preparation here, not rocket science. And while we are each unit, we are the same as well. And that's the truth. 
As it gets to me to the top of this chapter today, the plight of the aging prepper. I have a bit or a rant to please bear with me while I explain, he says. And I, he's got along the same path. And now, he's been a baby born or born between 1946 and 1964, and I was born in 1958. I find it a bit that I find many websites refer to senior preppers that don't know people with limited vision to what is happening in the world and limited ability to find the fend for themselves. Come on now, get real. This stereotype is simply not true. Many in the over 60 crowd walks two to five miles a day, work a full-time job, and active pursue hobbies that require strength and endurance. Other farms, others farm their land, and while living on or off the grid, chop wood, feed chickens, and milk to goats or cows day in, day out, rain or shine. And he said, most men that age have served in the military and thus understand and embrace the need of teamwork, discipline, and prevent to get a job done. So, you know, the thing is, is it's the truth. The problem is, is, you know, when I was in the 20s or the teens, whatever, and I would look at these old people, I was like, oh, my God. You don't really think a lot about your lives. But I was like listening to old people tell me stories and stuff. So I would spend hours, hours listening to these people while a lot of my friends was out playing kickball or whatever because I love hearing the stories. You would look at this person in there in this old beat up body, and you could not imagine them being a kid climbing over the fence. And you could imagine these kids living through a depression, or think about them being through the Vietnam War or the Korean War or any of these other wars. What you're looking at is just this old person. You're not looking at this person who has experienced life through these years, and actually through his or her eyes, they could teach you a lot. If you're willing to take time to listen. So, you know, uh, regardless of age, of course, you've got nutrition and diet with limited food supplies. So it's just like my Jones Seed series where I, I show things that what you can look for. Uh, Health care, both uh, treatment and prevention, you know, that, of course, requires your uh, medication. And in my case, I'm trying to learn. And share what I learned with plants and stuff for people to take care of themselves in emergency situations. Money for supplies, services, items were borrowed at the basis of life. In self defense, of course, on lethal or non lethal weapons or both. Uh, physically disabled and those with hearing and vision impaired. Community and companionship when it, if it all goes to heck. And that's something to think about there. You know, uh, I was talking to my friend other said I'm just fed up. I'm fed up. I moved up here in Ohio in December 2012. I'm fed up. Uh, I'm alone a lot. You know, I've got some friends and stuff, but they give me the looks. They know that I, I, I believe in nature and prepping and stuff. And uh, One of my friends made a comment and said, what won't you eat? I said, well, you know what? If the populace have you're going to be the first one knocking at my door and eat my grass. And he goes, yeah, you're right. The thing is, is that it's hard. When you see things different, and since I don't really approach things really radical like some people do, and that's what makes it hard because a lot of people think all oh, preppers are super radical. But the fact that I talk about the herbs and the plants that they need to be learning about, the fact that I talk about the things you need to make yourself your own cleansers and your own stuff in case something happens. And, you know, the fact is uh, finding someone to go nature hiking with you, to do the things with you, harvest the herbs with you. I've not been able to come across that type of person. I've had people say, oh, I'd love to go with you. Uh, and then when I call them up, they don't have time. It's either they got a new boyfriend or they're broke or something. Well, you know, what? get out in nature. It's free stuff. All you got to do is buy you a little something to eat. Just join me, you know. So, you know, that's a lot to think about. It says, uh, learning from our parents and our grandparents, and I've already talked about that, because, you know, a lot of our grandparents who are still alive today, and our parents, as old up in age, uh, lived through the Great Depression. They know, they know what it's like. You know, they I did an article of uh, the Great Depression Prepper, so check it out. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about it, but they were very civilized, and food was not really one of the issues with them. But also with the different times where they also helped each other and worked together. Not down to this so-called you see riding on TV, running over, complaining about something or other. No matter what it is, 
and I'm not talking about one particular race, I'm talking about around the world, and then you got these other people taking advantage of this grief situation or this problem situation, and go in and rob these stores and steal everything and destroy places of businesses that people spent years working on. You know, that's just stupid. Now, uh, he says he's been writing Passion Little Essays for a long time, of course, you know, so, you know, he's been here for a while. But, uh, he also talks about, uh, you know, he shared, uh, stuff about red, uh, he talking about police strength pepper spray. Uh, things like that you can have. You know, the thing is, is that, talking about you need to get a ham radio. A ham radio would be great if I could have forward ones. Not that I haven't checked into it, I have. But that's just not on my budget right now. And a ham radio is something to think about in a situation. If you just want to be able to communicate and talk to other people. I, I seen a ham radio in somebody's house the other day. And I don't think, uh, I don't even know if they even use it anymore, but I seen him with it. He was probably, uh, still in touch with probably maybe some of his old military friends or something. Who knows? A lot of them does it because they like to just talk around the world. And it was a hobby that they acquired when they was much, much younger. Now, he talks about, uh, shop the emergency essential monthly specials and things. Now, the fact is, is that what he basically talks about here is that we can learn from senior preppers. Preppers who, uh, like I say, grew up during the Depression times or who seen the hard times have learned what they can do with or do without. I see so many of them run to the store and buy a high dollar item. I mean, it's just bottom line. They, they're going to buy a main brand item and that's what we're going to buy. And then they're out of food because they went and spent top dollar on everything. They didn't get none of the sales. They didn't shop around for the sales. Everything was whatever they wanted at the time. So then they were screwed. But it says shop to Central Monthly Special. It's something you need to think about. Uh, discounts of 35%, sometimes a bit more. And it adds up. It really adds up to get these things up. He says, I am thrilled to see that one of the specials this month, of course, was freeze, grass, garden, vegetable combo for $24.99, which is 42% off. Now, the thing with freeze, grass stuff, and I do have a few put up. You can buy them in the, the containers and uh, have that on hand. You can also learn to have a dehydrator if you're able to afford one. And do that yourself and dehydrate your own stuff and, and prepare it. And you will really save a small fortune. Even setting yourself up a small square foot garden in the back of your yard. Or setting up flower pots in your house to raise uh, maybe a couple okra plants or a couple tomato plants. The amount of money that you would actually save would add up. And that also can fall into your purpose situation too. So don't shrug the senior preference here. Don't don't uh knock them off. Like I say this in here is the backdoor survival. If you want to go and look this article up and read it in more details and read some of his other articles. Senior preppers get shrunk on by a lot of people because they think that they don't know what they're doing. They start to think they're a little bit touched in their head. It's one thing when you see people putting up symmetric groceries and stuff for the kids. But I want to tell you what. The biggest thing I hear from people. Oh, I got a freezer full of stuff. I'm putting up stuff in my freezer. Well, what happens if that freezer goes out? All that food goes bad. Well, why don't you can some? Oh, I don't like doing all that candy. That just takes too much time. i just rather go to the store and buy it and just put everything in the freezer. I put a, uh, and I see people buying tons and tons of TV dinners. And I was just as guilty. But I realized how bad of a health it was causing for me. It, I was having so many health issues and having to go back and forth to the doctor because I couldn't control my blood pressure. I couldn't control this. I couldn't control that. It was due to the preservatives that was in the TV dinners. And it's not saying not to eat them. I'm just saying is I can't eat them because they was not good for me. When I was younger, I ate them. Didn't think nothing about them. My health was a lot better. But Mother Nature and genetics has a lot to do with your, your uh, health issues, 
the jobs that you did over the years and chemicals and things that you were exposed to also has a lot to do with your health issues. So think about it. Senior preppers are something that you need to listen to a lot of them. You need to hear their stories. You need to sort these old people out. Sit there and let them tell you what they did to make ends meet when they was growing up through the depression, through the time. And take notes if you need to. Don't be afraid to get that notebook. Don't be afraid to record it. Listen to some of these old farts. They could actually teach you a thing or two. And you know what? In an SHTF situation, you better have about four or five of those old seniors in your group. That's been around and been a few times. That's raced the gardens. That's done this. That's canned the foods. And knows how to put things up. Because they're going to teach you. So this is Life Prepper here. Now you check out my Jones C series. I work on it mostly during the summer months and, and everything. So I'm going to have several more of them coming out. Uh, check out Life Prepper here, my YouTube site. Check out my page on Facebook, The World of Joe. Now be safe, be happy. Bless you all.